Welcome back to my second channel where we hang out and do fun random projects that don't quite fit on the main channel. We just have more fun here. If you've seen my video on the main channel of where I lifted my truck, there's a few more modifications I want to make. And the one today is slightly illegal, but still works out pretty well. Let's get started. So when I'm talking about illegal, I'm not talking about like street legal or road legal or anything like that. It's more of a trademark issue. So Toyota has these grills for the front of the trucks and there's a trademark obviously on the name Toyota. There's different styles of grills that you can swap out and the style of grill that I want Toyota sells for about 400 bucks, but I found one online that's a copycat or like an imitation Toyota grill that sells for about 100 bucks. So it's kind of hard to justify spending 300 extra dollars on the genuine Toyota part when the copycat one does the exact same thing. And there's no like performance increase or anything with the truck, it's literally just a piece of plastic. So today we're gonna find out if the imitation grill is any good and if it even fits on the truck. It's interesting to see how it ships because putting the actual name Toyota on there would be illegal. So on the grill itself, they have the O-Y-O-T and then you have to put the letters on yourself so it doesn't get stopped when they import it. Kind of creative. Now that we have all the letterings on, let's see how hard it is to remove the old grill. So inside the truck, there's two 10 millimeter bolts here and here. We'll pop these off. And then one thing that the 2018 Tacomas have that some of the other Tacomas don't is a radar sensor underneath this logo right here. So we have to unclip that. And then the last thing is one little plastic clip right here. Which with the right amount of leverage can pop right out. And the bottom part of the grill right here is just held in with a little series of clasps. So if it comes out directly towards the front of the vehicle. So if we're looking at both grills side by side, on the other side here we have the radar sensor. So I'm gonna unscrew some of these screws right here along the sides and toss that into this panel here. And then on this to remove, you know, this section of the grill that's gonna be replaced by the black section, there are 10 screws and then a bunch of these little clasp things that you just take and you pinch shut and then the whole spike can just pop out of the front of the housing. Radar sensor is easy enough to remove. There's plastic clasps here here in the corner and down here and then two screws, one here, one here, and one here. And then the whole radar contraption can come loose. I was worried about this being like damageable because in this grill there's nothing protecting it through the front slot. And in this one there's like this plastic backing right here. But honestly the whole thing's made of plastic so I really doubt you know that it could get damaged. And the probability of something flying through that hole is pretty minimal. Now these metal screw holes are pretty important, so I'm going to pop these out and transfer them over to the plastic housing over here. So we want this portion, so we're going to put this other plastic frame into this one. Let's see what else we need. So it looks like we have the black plastic here and then this chrome portion. Nice, so it looks like we got rid of the chrome portion and now it's just solid black plastic all the way around. I like that better. So for the radar sensor, I'm gonna put in this screw hole, clips in. So we have one plastic clasp up at the top of the radar housing, and then one over here on the top of the grill as well. And I'll probably just end up cutting this one off so it's not dangling around back here. And all of those black screws that we took off, aren't needed with the new grill. The back is just held in by those clasps, which isn't as secure, I don't think, but so far it's staying on. And now it is installed on the truck. I have the sensor reconnected right here, and then the two bolts in the top, and then those two clips on either side. Okay, so quick update. I've been running this grill for about a couple months now, and everything is 100% okay, unless it is snowing or raining outside. If you look closely, there's a couple little holes inside of this honeycomb mesh where water can get inside on the sensor. And when the water's on the sensor, a warning pops up inside of the cab saying that it's like out of order or not functional for a time. But once it dries off, then the sensor goes back to functioning like normal. So in the vast majority of the time that I drive my truck, it's okay. But with other brand new 2018s from the dealership, they come with this little panel right here, which I'll also link down in the video description right below this. And so when I tried to remove this section of the grill, I actually had to break the plastics that go on top of it. You can see the two little broken parts on the part that's closest to you. 
And these two little pins right here, right below the Toyota logo, snapped off of the old honeycomb piece. But what I'm hoping is that this new honeycomb piece, which doesn't have any holes in the grill, is able to block out all of the water that might touch this sensor on the inside. Um, it's just got these two little slots and then the two pins up top. One last little pin up top. thing clips into place and it's pretty solid don't imagine it's ever gonna come out on its own if I pull hard enough I can get it to unlatch a little bit but there's no way even with breaking hard that's gonna come out to be honest I'm not really sure I like that little shiny patch right there in the center I think it kind of distracts from the plastic and the mat of the whole truck the aesthetics of it so if you don't mind your sensor going off when it's raining or snowing which actually is probably when you need the sensor the most Maybe you don't need the uh, clear shiny protector for it. Last and hopefully final update. I'll keep the video description active with any updates after this, but when I put that cover in front of the sensor, it did take a while for the computer inside of the truck to realize that there was a new obstacle in front of the sensor. So it would work for like the first five minutes of a drive and then turn off and have that warning sign pop up again. But after about five or six days of that, I assume that the sensor recalibrated itself and now that warning never pops up anymore and the sensor is functioning. I did test it out, you know, coming close to another vehicle and then having that warning light pop up. Anyway, so that is the update. Everything is currently working with the new block in place, and uh, that's it. So what do you think? Is it worth the 100 bucks to get rid of the Chrome and add the Toyota logo instead of just, you know, that little emblem? Or would you have paid $400 for the actual factory version instead of paying $100 for the imitation? Let me know down in the comments. I'll put a link in the video description so you can compare the prices of the aftermarket, you know, the copycat one and the real genuine Toyota part. And if you haven't seen the truck lift kit yet, I'll put a link for that right here, as well as come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. We have fun over there. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you around.